are at the site of a two zone Daikin ductless heat pump system. And in fact, we do have a ducted ductless heat pump up in the attic. So I will show you that. So I thought I'd start out here. Here's our unit, we're running, we're in cooling mode, calling for cooling on both zones. Uh, up here is our, we had to have six inch. It's a big speedy channel there because we have two sets of refrigerant lines, one for each zone running through the attic. Uh, we're strapped to the building there, our pad set on gravel. We took the pavers out. We didn't just set the, the pad on top of the pavers. We took the pavers out, uh, tamped that gravel down in there, then set our pad. We've got risers there and a surge protector on the disconnect as we always do. Always put a surge protector on these. So there's that first set of speedy channel. And then up our refrigerant lines run up in the attic and they actually run the full distance of the house here. So I'll show you this. And then we have a floor mount Daikin unit in the main living space. So you can see, actually look what the guys did there. They cut the speedy channel to fit the pitch of that bird blocking perfectly. I and mean, that's just level of detail right there, but awesome. Runs down and then their drain line comes out the bottom of that. So that is that. And yeah, I think from here, we'll take a look in the house. Here we are, here's our floor mount unit. And the whole idea with this floor mount unit is as opposed to putting it up here, you can see there's lots of uh, clean lines in the house here. We wanted to keep it out of the way. So down here was a perfect spot for it. You don't really notice, the couch is there, the door swings open, you don't notice. And uh, the space is really nice and open. So that's gonna heat and cool this room beautifully. And then if we move on here, you'll see we, this is our first glimpse of our ducted ductless that's in the attic. We have our diffuser here in the ceiling for the study. Here in the hallway, we have our 20 by 20 return air with a two inch filter. And in here, in the bathroom, we've got a six inch duct. Again, adjustable round diffuser. In the sewing room, same thing, centered in the room. And our last one here in the entryway. And we put in a, a pretty, we put in an eight inch here in the entryway. I don't think we really need it, but we also put volume dampers up top so we can adjust air down if we need to. And we can also adjust air down here with these turn handle dampers, but they get really noisy when you do that. So I always try to put volume dampers up top with these diffusers, which we really like a lot. It's just that's the one downside to them is they can be pretty loud. So we've got that. And then over here, kind of tucked away, this is our navigation control. This is the thermostat you can expect with these ducted ductless systems from Daikin. So that's pretty nice. Um, the older, the CDX units used to have a temperature sensor that you'd put up in the ceiling, you'd have to mount a remote, but this is really nice because we can go through and I can actually uh, change the settings deep in this thermostat and um, I can adjust for static pressure on this system. Okay, here we are up in the attic with our ducted unit. And as you can see here, we've got our return box We've got an elbow on each end of the return to cut down on static, and we put in an oversized return um, just for A, noise, and velocity over the filter. I want to keep that as low as I can. And also, you know, I just run into too many undersized returns out there, and I get tired of it. So here we are. We've got an oversized return. Here's our ducted unit. We're hung up to the trusses here with Unistrut. And there's our condensate line, and it actually goes up before it slopes because we have a lift mechanism on this unit itself. And I don't know if you can see back there, but we have got an actual supply transition and a two foot supply plenum with takeoffs on the sides. That's for optimal air distribution. And on all of those takeoffs for all four ducts, we have four ducts, three eight inch ducts and one six inch. I put volume dampers uh, up here at the plenum so I could keep noise down at the registers themselves. So 
my plan here is basically oversize the ductwork um, because I, like I said, run into too many situations where it's undersized and then um, damper everything off up here. And then if we need to make little further adjustments, we can do them at the registers, but I try to avoid that simply for noise. So there's that. That just looks great. Did a really nice job there. Everything, even in the attic, these guys do a good job. So there's our drain pan up on risers so we can get the amount of slope that we need out the building. Our drain pan is overhanging the unit three inches on each side. So we are good to go there. And yeah, that's it. That's what a ducted ductless looks like up in an attic. Good job. All right. Uh, it's always really difficult for us to explain to customers why we're designing a system the way that we are and you know I thought that this would be a perfect example uh, to show you guys why we designed the system the way that we did so as you can see from the walkthrough video we have a floor mount unit here in this part of the house and then the rest of the house is all zoned off with a ducted ductless so over here, the reason we were able to get just a ductless unit in here is because we have one big open floor plan. Uh, we weren't worried about air distribution. And the thing that we really liked is this low floor unit really blended in well with the room. It's nice and hidden next to the couch and uh, the air is blowing the direction we want it. Um, one of the biggest things here and something that we had to think about is where is the client gonna be spending the majority of their time in the room? And the answer to that is typically the couch. So the couch and the seating area is over here. And one thing we really liked about this design is we've got adjustable louvers on this system. We're not going to have direct air blowing on the human body, which is something we always want to avoid with a ductless if we can help it. Some situations we just can't help it. But um, in heating mode, not that big of a deal. In cooling mode, uh, you'll feel like you're in a freezer pretty quick if that cold air is blowing right on you. So that was great, we were able to avoid all that and we were able to get away with just one single ductless in this room. Now moving on over here, this whole second half of the house, which by the way we did a, a heating loss cooling load calculation on each half of this house, both this part and this part. And in this part of the house, you can tell there's a bunch of little rooms and they're all pretty closed off. So that kind of throws away the idea that we could put, let's say a wall mount unit here and that air is gonna make its way all the way through here and back into these rooms because the reality is air cannot travel through walls. Um, so it's just not gonna work. And the other reality is we don't wanna put a ductless head in each of these rooms because all these rooms are simply too small to handle a ductless. Um, you know, the smallest ductless unit that we really have is around 7,000 BTUs and the average bedroom could use about two or 3,000 BTUs so uh, we risk over cycling and excessive noise which is something we really don't want. So ducted makes sense. We've got a ducted system, we've got an oversized return like I talked about in the video, we've got oversized supplies with volume dampers, we're able to control noise and air distribution and uh, yeah this is a quiet uh, easy to balance system and each room gets the exact amount of air that's needed. So it really is just a better deal to go this way. So by having a thermostat here and this unit which is sensing temperature, we've essentially made this home two separate zones. So one zone here and one zone here and that is the reason why we went with a ducted ductless on one half of the house and a ductless floor mount unit on the other half.